You can't call it a J.C. Higgins. You can't call it a high standard. We have to just go with Sears. Don't let the name fool you. Here in the Millsap Garage, he's regarded as one of the most desirable, most capable, most solidly built, precision working shotguns that are out there. I know those are big words, but come along. I'll show you. Mill Serp Garage. All right, here we are. We're with the... Uh, Sears Model 20. It's got to be the most hurting possible name that we could be calling out a shotgun here in the middle of garage for people to just go like, yawn. Next video. But listen, do not underestimate these things. First and foremost, my suggestion to you is to go back and visit my J.C. Higgins Model 20 video. It's a while back, somewhere around the beginning of the summer. That was the 583.53. That was the Sears model number. That was a 12 gauge, two and three quarter, 28 inch poly choke, five plus one capacity pump action. It was a 1946. Those are manufactured from 46 to 61. It was a first year J.C. Higgins. Model 20, these were built off the high standard, Model 200 frame, okay? These were designed by Frederick Humiston. We have the patent, we have the paperwork, we have everything. So, what happened in 1961? Well, in 1961, they dropped the J.C. Higgins brand sears okay and uh they went with a lot of these ted williams guns we got one of them that's posted up here on the channel but i guess there was kind of like a uh maybe there was a little bit of an interim there where they didn't go into the ted williams guns yet um but they dropped the jc higgins brand not really sure um you know there's a little bit of a gray area in there for me in my research to really find out exactly um, what the story was there. But uh, as you can see, we have proof, proof, test, proof tested 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch chamber. And over here we have Sears Roebuck and Company model number, model 20, 12 gauge. It's 580, sorry. Can't read it on there. I got to go with my paperwork. It is 583-2006 Sears. That's all it says. Doesn't say Ted Williams. Doesn't say J.C. Higgins. It just says Sears. Now, nearest I can tell, these were made later on in the 60s. This one I have dated using um using the barrel date code here barrel date code here of what is it again f h there it is f h dates two here is our high standard barrel dating graph and that dates to uh june of 1964 so the J.C. Higgins Model 20 is a 1946. And we could drop that guy in right here. We're going to be doing some comparisons. It's a 1946. And the uh, Sears Model 20 is a 1964. These are an awesome family right here of, uh, of shotguns, let me tell you. Um, so there's some differences between the two, but my... My suggestion is to go back and just watch the 
video on the JC Higgins Model 20. Not going to repeat all that stuff. That's a, I love that video. That's a great video. I think I did that one really well and was really able to, um, you know, throw down a lot of info on that one when it wasn't really easy to find here on the uh, on the J.C. Higgins. The J.C. Higgins, uh, if you remember, there were uh, a couple of things I uh, didn't like about it, a couple of things I liked about it, but when I got this thing to the range, and that's another thing, I didn't have, uh, I didn't have any range footage for you because my camera had blown over. So um, this time I went to the range, and once again, here we are. We're getting ready to show some really nice footage. And there we go, the camera blew over. So <laughs> this is proof that the camera actually blew over. Luckily, it blew over on a day where I was going to be at the range for a long time. I shot like six rounds today, and it was, they were literally 60-mile-an-hour gusts. It was the most insane day to shoot trap. Uh, I was able to prop up the camera properly, get it really wedged in somewhere where I was able to take some video. So don't worry. We got some video on both the J.C. Higgins Model 20 and the Sears Model 20. Um, not that this footage really, I mean, I'm, I'm so far away. It could be any shotgun, you wouldn't know the difference. But trust me, I got the proper footage. And uh, we're going to check out some of the similarities between these two, some of the differences, um, what they're modeled off of. One of the things is that uh, I don't think I even broke down the uh, J.C. Higgins Model 20. It's really interesting to take a look inside, too, and uh, we could do that with this guy. Um, so here, this I want to pull up first and foremost. This right here, I showed it in the J.C. Higgins video and just touched on it. I didn't own this yet, and I said here they had made some changes and uh, there's a couple of things that had bothered me with the uh, J.C. Higgins. And this says new improved J.C. Higgins. I guess they made these changes before they actually called it, you know, before they, this might have been like, say, right before they left the J.C. Higgins name. So this might have been like uh, 60, 1960, 61, well, like the last year of the J.C. Higgins. So, um Number one, it says something about a magazine cutoff here. I don't have that magazine cutoff on mine. So it might have been that this might be a very early version, 64. Might be the first year of uh, these changes. Um, but we do have uh, the safety moved to the front of the trigger guard. So as you can see, one of the things that bothered me about the... Uh, J.C. Higgins, was that you had the slide release right here. And when you would push in the slide release, you could inadvertently hit the button, uh, putting the safety on. And when you shoot and trap, you'd have to potentially hit this a lot. And then you could be hitting the safety inadvertently, causing for some, uh, you know, an embarrassing situation of you calling for a bird and then nothing happens and everybody looks at you because your safety was on. Well, with the uh, Sears Model 20 here, they moved it to the front of the trigger guard. Slide release stays in the same spot. Now you have just a dedicated slide release. Nothing else here in the way to get in your way or make you press that, which is kind of cool. Uh, another thing is the ventilated rib. It says here, now... New ventilated rib on deluxe model. So I guess this is the deluxe model. Now you can enjoy greater accuracy and faster pointing with a high quality ventilated sighting rib on your Model 20. Not at a price in the custom gun class, but at a price we believe to be an all-time record low. $66.95 cash. Uh, the deluxe model has power pack choke control. I don't know what kind of barrel end choke, adjustable choke this is. Maybe somebody out there can really turn me on to this. No, it says full when it should be like right there, I think aligned with the sight, but it goes a little bit extra further. And uh, that is definitely the full position, but it only has full improved cylinder and one other and modified just those three designations on it. 
And uh, I don't know which one this is. I really don't. But uh, you know, you could uh, maybe get a little bit of a closer look at it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, this is the power pack choke system right here. Uh, this is what I found online. So I don't think it's that. I don't think it's the power pack. Uh, I'm not really. Uh, I'm not really sure what choke system it is. To be honest with you. So uh, what do we have here? Free falling action. If you press the slide release with the gun pointed up, the action just falls right open. Very, very smooth. They're known for. Um, there's the new magazine cutoff. Don't have that on here. Interlocked barrel just means that it's uh, not, it doesn't come out. It's not removable. So that was actually, it's kind of like the thing where you take a bad thing and you try to make it a good thing because... A lot of other shotguns, they come apart in the middle, you know, and you could, for storage, for travel. And uh, one of the detriments of this thing was that it didn't, it didn't have a takedown where it came apart. This was just bonded, you know. So, like, it just had to stay full size and you couldn't interchange the barrels. So, if you wanted to put on a longer barrel, shorter barrel, um, back then, like the variable choke thing might not have been so big. You just had different barrels. You had a full choke barrel, an improved modified barrel. You couldn't change them like that. So that could be considered a bad thing, but they turned it into a good thing. They were like, this is an exclusive J.C. Higgins feature. The receiver and the barrel are precisely aligned and fused as one integral unit. Your Model 20 will always retain its precise accuracy. So they made it like a good thing, which... It might be true what they're saying, you know, <laughs> the fact that it isn't removable and it's really locked into place might actually, might actually make it more accurate. Right here, the nameplate inlay, it has that. And some guy, it's either W, it's either WH or HM, one or the other. We got to get some, we definitely need some more light. How's that? See, I, I put this on, but then I get a lot of shadows. See? Get a lot of shadows. All right, what's next? Custom like balance. You like the Model 20 smooth, lightweight balance. Comes up to the shoulder fast and in a natural point. It's true. It, it really is. It's actually designed to help you shoot better. Amazing. Six shots in three and a half seconds. The fastest of three most popular pump repeaters tested in Sears Ballistic Laboratory. Sears had ballistic laboratories? Mm -hmm. I think that was like, you know, the mop room in uh, the back of the uh, Sears in Poughkeepsie. All right, so we got the standard Model 20 and the deluxe Model 20. Uh, that's what we got listed here. The basic Model 20, all the fine shooting characteristics, all the exclusive J.C. Higgins features and quality, except as a plain barrel without ventilated rib or power pack, a choice of cylinder, modified, or full choke. So you only had those three choices, cylinder, modified, or full. That was it. I guess that's all you really need. That was like uh, not even 60 bucks. It's just that basic model. So this one's kind of cool to know. It had some of the deluxe features on it. You know what I mean? So uh, so that's nice. So Humiston, let's let's dig out Humiston. Here's the patent. All right, I don't know if I have a digitized one to show you, but we could just poke it. You could look it up. Here's the. I gotta kill this. I gotta kill this light. It doesn't work that good. It too many shadows. And I'm gonna pull this up and over there. There we go. That's better. 2,476,196. That's Humiston's patent. Filed in 1948, granted in 1949. There it is. He patented the whole shindig right there. And this patent, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you all of it. There's the receiver. Here's the trigger group, the carrier, the bolt, and the carrier. Here's the carrier, the bolt. The lifter. Right? Isn't that the, isn't that the lifter? It's some, some kind of part. Here's the uh, interesting thing about this patent. The uh, Frederick L. Humiston, Orange, Connecticut, was the assigner 
of one half to the High Standard Manufacturing Corporation from Hamden, Hamden, Connecticut, the Corporation of Connecticut, and one half to Sears, Roebuck, and Company, Chicago, Illinois, a corporation of Illinois. This patent was half to High Standard and half to Sears Roebuck. So if you think you were going to figure out who actually owns this design with the patent, you are not going to figure that out. Um, research tells me that, you know, Sears, they don't have a, uh, you know, they don't have a shotgun uh, making operation going on or whatever. They just had high standard make these. And then at some point when Sears kind of, I don't know, I, I guess they just allowed High Standard to make them on their own, or that's the question. I mean, obviously High Standard started making the same shotgun. You're just like, how did that happen? Did that happen under friendly circumstances? Did it happen because Sears gave it up and just said, here, we're not making them anymore. We don't care if you, you, if you keep doing it. I mean, who knows? If it's part of the agreement, after a certain amount of years, they can make them on their own. Who knows? But I'll tell you this. Humiston, I really want to sing his praises. I really want to tell you how great he is, but he was kind of creepy because this is the Remington Model 31, okay? Let's take a, uh, let's take a gander here. I know we got some crazy... I know we got some crazy uh, reflections going on here. I know. I'm going to fix that. All right, here we go. Let's do it with, uh, here, we'll compare it, 31 with the Sears Model 20 right here. Look in here. Take a look in here. Stolen. I mean, come on. Come on. The design is completely ripped. The Model 31, the Remington Model 31. Awesome shotguns, too, by the way. I took it with me today to do some trap shooting with it, but never shot it. Why did I have to? When I had a J.C. Higgins Model 20 and a Sears Model 20 with me, I felt like, uh, I, felt like I had a Model 31 right in my hands because they basically, they did basically uh, just snatch the design. I don't know how they got away with that. I don't know if they paid anything for that i don't know if they got in trouble for that but man it's a good thing i wasn't on that uh, patent inquiry board to see if they infringed because uh i've taken both of them apart too and it's not like when you get inside it just happens to look similar because the metal pieces are the same it's like no, it's like it's obviously obviously borrowed and uh, that's what even gives it that that real smooth ball bearing feel to it but hey, listen, Model 31 is awesome. The Remington Model 31 is awesome. And like, why not spread its awesomeness around? If it's that awesome, fine. Let somebody else borrow from it and make another awesome shotgun. Who cares? 583-2006, if you want to look it up. That's the model number. And um, then I think there was a 2006, 2007, 8. That's how you kind of date them. Um, if you didn't, if you weren't able to use the high standard barrel date code, I think you'd still be able to date it through the Sears model numbers with that documentation if you looked looked around enough. And uh, let's take it apart. Let's get in there. Let's take a look inside. So the first thing that we're going to do, and I've already picked out the correct bits you know you need the correct bits for these things this is a wide screw right here in this uh in this uh retainer right here if you if you um you know used a uh use the skinny screwdriver you'd wind up galling that up so the first thing you want to do actually maybe the first thing that we should do oh i'll show you one thing that's cool listen one more thing hold on let me go grab the do have to cover this now because I know I'm going to forget. So if you already watched, like I told you, to watch the um, video on the J.C. Higgins here, I spoke about this, this hook that's right here. This hook right here that holds the action bar. So here's the action bar. It connects to the wood. So when you're 
when you're doing this motion, you're moving this action bar. This action bar is recessed into the side of the frame there. You can see it. And it goes all the way through to this nub right here where it connects to this hook. You could pull that hook right off. Now this is moving. This is separate now. Oh, what's it getting caught on? It's getting, oh, it's back in there again. How did that happen? It comes out. See that? And you're able to disconnect this from the carrier and then hook it right back in again. I guess this is just for disassembly or if you wanted to remove the magazine tube and take the wood off, you could do that leaving the internals inside. But they simplified the design and you can see in here, it's still captive right there, but there's no more thing to get rid to take that off of there. And it's uh, it might be just that they did it to simplify the design and save money. Um, or it could be that there was a weakness problem with that, then that was breaking, you know, because if that if that breaks right there, then that's it. I mean, it's not pumping anymore, you know. So don't know what the reason for that is, but it was only like a one-year thing, and then uh, they didn't have that no more, that little hook. Let's see. I need a longer punch here. Okay, let's. Uh, so we start off the disassembly here getting rid of this pin and I unfortunately did not have everything exactly ready the way I was supposed to sorry all right so what we do is we're going to tap this out there it is the pin is out trigger guard then just comes right out and we're going to lose the, uh, is that called the cartridge stop? I'm really bad with nomenclature lately. Don't know what it is, so I do apologize. And then uh, from here, you know, I'm not even going to take the magazine tube off, so that's a good thing. We'll just stay right here uh, inside the uh, receiver. I don't have to worry about that. And then the uh, carrier comes uh, right out. And then... You can lift the, uh, maybe that's why that had to come out. Can will this come out without the uh, magazine? Sure, it will. I think you just have to move that all the way up here. Then you lift this. Will this come up? Maybe it goes all the way back. Is it back that it has to go or forward? Or maybe the bolt, does the bolt just lift out? Hmm. Forgot which one of these comes out first. This should just uh, lift up. I don't know what's uh, what's stop. Oh, you know what it is. Yeah, then this would have to come off in order to get in order to get this out. This has to come off. So we do have to do that. So that uh, little nub there that uh, was on the action bar prevents the. Um, it prevents the uh, the lifter from coming out. It gets in the way. So you do have to take this off. But that's okay. You can take it off. It's not a big deal. That comes out. And then there's a plug. There's a little set screw right here. But you have to be careful. This will be under spring pressure right here. Did I take the wrong screw bit? No, that's the right one. And again, a nice fat screw bit there. That looks like a tiny screw, but but it does have a uh, pretty fat does have a pretty fat screw slot in it. See that? And you want to make sure that you know you want to make sure you have a nice big fat bit that's not going to gall it. So even though it's a tiny bit, see it does have a big fat face on it. And then uh, you got your spring, magazine spring. There was a wooden dowel in here when I got it. Sometimes you'll find that in there. It's always good to take these down when you first get them because that's a, um, a limiter, a round limiter. And what it does is it, uh, for hunting, you're only allowed a certain amount of rounds inside the gun. Let's say it'll be like two in the tube and one in the chamber. 
is all you're allowed. So since five fit in here, there's a, a metal, just a wooden rod that takes up the space of three rounds. Um, so if you go, uh, if you go hunting, you don't, uh, you know, go to jail. And then this, uh, this can move forward enough now where this could lift it, right? Doesn't it? Or wow, the whole thing has to come off. Are you serious? All right. So then we, we actually turn the magazine tube like this at this point. We have the, uh, the follower in here. Let's get the, get the follower out. That's the follower. Get the follower out. Then we unscrew the whole magazine tube. Comes out of here. Then this whole thing slides forward far enough, theoretically, to, uh, to now come out. Does it or does it not? Or is that just a, a rumor? There we go. Now it's off. There we go. Nobody could say I didn't go all the way. Then you can pinch this, you squeeze it. Now on these these newer ones, on the Sears Model 20, you don't see any signs here on the outside of the receiver of these tabs. But if you notice, here on the older one, on the J.C. Higgins, you do see right here. And where are they? Am I... Am I bugging out, or are they? I could have sworn that they uh, they showed here on the outside. At least one of them does. No, that's not from there. I think I must be bugging out. I could have sworn maybe it was the Model Thirty One that did that. Hmm. I don't really remember. I think I was just hallucinating. I just had a, a weird flashback hallucination. Don't mind me. I could have sworn those. Oh, you know what? It's the Mossberg Model 500, which is also similar. It's the Mossberg Model 500 that has that. And uh, here's our bolt. And it's good. I just shot it today, so at least I get to... It was clean, but I hope you guys don't mind. Just going to do a little bit of... Uh, get, what did I shot? I think I shot two rounds with this guy. And uh, one with the J.C. Higgins. And I had the goose gun out today, which I shot a 23 with the goose gun. It was very windy. And the goose gun, I guess that longer barrel, because <laughs> it's reaching out so far, really mattered. And uh, so going back together, we get our bolt in here. You know, it slides into that locking lug. Listen. Oh, yeah, that's not fooling around. Yeah, the locking lug, you see it in there. That huge mortise in there. And then this part of the bolt sticks in that. I mean, come on. Don't talk about strength. Listen to that again. Yeah. That ain't going nowhere. And then uh, this guy. Where does it go again? I can't see. You know what I'm going to do? It'll help us both out. I'm going to put on my headlamp there we go now we could both see i love working with uh i love working with one of these there's the cartridge lifter in place what do we do now we got to make sure we do this all in the right order oh before we do anything hold on a minute hold the phone before we do anything i think we got to get the uh we got to remember to go in the right order we got to get this on so let's get the action bar in here and get this screwed in. Magazine tube screws in. Still screwing it in. Got to make sure you bottom that out nice. Be some problems if you don't. There you go, it's in there. And uh, so now, when we put the, wait a minute, now we could put the, sorry, now the lifter, right. Oh, did we have to have that in first? I think we had to have that in first. We messed up. We done messed up, Aaron. Eh, we got to unscrew this now. And now it's very tight. Now I cannot turn it. 
Okay, sorry about that. You definitely have to go in reverse order. We did not. That has to go on top of that. Okay. Let that be a lesson to you. You must, you must reassemble. There's a reason why it came apart in a certain order. And then when you're taking it apart, it has to be done in that order to come apart. And the problem with putting it together is you're not sure if you're just doing it wrong or if you know, you're going, the steps are, aren't right. You know, there's no way to take it apart wrong. Only a way to put it together wrong. So you want to isolate putting it together wrong by making sure you have the procedure, the order proper. Now, see that notch on here? That notch has to go, guess what? Right on the action bar there. And you see there's a square right here in the receiver cut into it perfect for that size to drop right in there, right onto there. And then let's move it just to make sure. Yeah, see, there we go. Now we're working. Now we get cartridge stop in place. Oh no. I know you're all sitting there going like, what an idiot. Because we didn't put the follower. Magazine <laughs> follower. You see? This is what happens. Let's take the... Uh, Let's take the uh, little carrier out again. And this is even tighter now because I put it on even even extra tight. All right, there we go. So, oh, wait, we could slide this right down. We don't have to take this out because from here, we're good. We could just slide it right in there. There we go. And we'll put the rest of it on later. All right, false alarm. You were okay. You were good. I wasn't totally stupid. I could have saved myself there, but now that I told you that I thought I did it wrong, I might as well have done it wrong. Put this in there. There we go. So can we put uh, everything else back together again here? Let's let's just go in the order that we went in before, and let's just do the spring. spring and this cap now I remember I remember a thing with this you got to make sure you're using the right hole I think they're different sizes let me just make sure this screws into here I don't think that's the one I think it's this one right so this goes here this goes here do you guys see what's going on i hope so and we screw this in there we are now do not go crazy with these. I think there's supposed to be two, and I only have one. There's another space for one over there, but I only have this one. So you definitely want to be sure to not make that too tight. There we go. That's perfect. And then uh, we slide this down. And there's a groove in the barrel right where this goes. So you make sure you get that in the right spot. Get the right bit. And again with this guy, don't go crazy. You don't want to snap anything. It's not like it's really... Holding together craziness. Just a little twerk. There we go. And 
Don't forget the cartridge stop goes right in there. The back of the trigger group kind of goes in first. You hold that in with your finger. And that's kind of like the back of the trigger group in there first. Kind of finds a spot. Not in that spot. That's the spot. And then the trigger group falls right into place. Theoretically. Falls right into place. There we go. And that's it. And then our pin. Right in. Nice. That's how to do that. Let's uh let's test it with snap caps. This is what I love about this thing. Nothing in the way here to just drop in rounds in and fill in that tube. Amazing smoothness, always a positive ejection. You're dropping rounds in doing trap. You're never having a uh if that it's getting weird, you know, where it's not, not closing or whatever, always closes, like, so smooth. That's twice that it flipped around like that in there, but you know it's not going to do that if it's in an upright position, so. But like this, we covered this in the um, J.C. Higgins video, too. Uh, this is, like, skeletonized, so you see, this is the only part of the lifter that you see is this piece right here. Other than that, it fits around the bolt. It almost doesn't even look like this. You're like, how the hell is that going to... Just that little piece of lifter is all it needs. So there isn't like a big metal plate here that you have to like press something or get out of the way and then you're fumbling and then it's stuck. And you know, some of those shotguns, it goes behind the edge of it. It doesn't like actually just go into the tube and stay there. It has to like come out a little and kind of sit behind the lifter. Not this guy. This guy, when it's time for that to come out of there, watch this. Yep, it is not fooling around. And it's going to load from however it lands in there. It's loading it. It's ejecting it. You're throwing rounds in. It's loading. It's ejecting it. And check this out. I'm going to show you something else cool. A lot of times, so um, you'd have, say you have a, a, a buckshot. So you got a buckshot chambered and you have a slug here, right? And you want to switch them. Now you want you see a deer and you have a buckshot here and a slug here. You want to change the slug, whatever. You just want to swap these two. Look at how if you go slow with this one, say you, you're holding the shotgun, you turn it sideways. If you go slow, it just pops up right there for you to just take right out. Then you just close the action and uh, and feed this one in. Sorry. <laughs> what happened? You call me a lot. Oh, it wasn't closed all the way. Feed that one in. It's that easy to swamp them. So once again, if you just do it slow, when you open it, it, it leaves it. doesn't knock it out. It leaves it right there for you. See that? Pops it up, and it just leaves it that time it dropped. But it's like the, the extractor holds on to it for you. Like, here you go. It's not doing it now. It's jinxed now. I jinxed it. But trust me, I noticed that it's an easy gun to, to manipulate and use. It's like a, it's like a tool, a finely used tool. No other shotgun functions like this in the, in the middle circle garage. You know that there's old things get stuck, browns get falling out. These are snap caps, by the way, just in case the silver empty um metal shells didn't already tell you that uh, i should have said that right away because then people they usually jump down my throat saying that i'm loading live ammo i only load live ammo at the range so uh this one is 12 gauge two and three quarter 27 inch they didn't make magnum ones of these that was one of the detriments uh, variable choke, 5 plus 1 capacity, pump action, 5 round under barrel tube magazine. Uh, I think these were the f high standard Flight King, which were, makes no sense because those were manufactured from 56 to 60. So I, I don't know. I don't know enough about these high standards or enough about these changes to really know um, 
exactly what uh, what history to attribute to High Standard, to Sears, to J.C. Higgins. All I know is that I love these shotguns. I um, took them out today. Took them out today to this trap range. Let me tell you what I like about these guys at the trap range. Um, while I show you the uh, footage here. What I like about these guys is that uh, they don't have long barrels. So I'm usually a big fan of the 30-inch barrels, you know. That's what I want to see on my shotguns. I want to see at least 30-inch barrels. It seems like I do the best with those. The problem with the 30-inch barrels is that it's going to be heavier. They're longer. It's like a it's like a longer swing. So depending, if you get a lot of straight shots, you're great. But if you're getting a lot of those, if you're on Station 1 and Station 5 and you're getting a lot of those flyers, those ones that are going way off to the side, notice that with the longer barreled shotguns, you're... You're, you're at a little, it's a little bit of a detriment if you got a chase, you know? And uh, the lighter that the shotgun gets, uh, it, it, it gets better until it gets to a certain point where it's too light, and then you kind of feel like you have this, like, lack of control. At least the, I'm just talking about, like, for me. So I feel like I have a lack of control, and then it starts, it gets a little erratic. My movements would get erratic because... There isn't any like weight behind that movement to you know to keep things uh, slowed down, kind of like you know. I feel like it could swing too far. I noticed that the shorter barrels, the shorter barrels make those kinds of shot easier, um, but at the cost of I kind of feel like uh, you know like maybe that the spread is a little bit more, or. Even with a full choke, I just feel a difference. With shorter barrels, I never do well. Let's just put it that way. Um, I'd have to start patterning and really, you know, doing scientific research into my shooting to really figure out why. But the shorter barrels never really work out well for me. And I'm always, I'm always more, I want to, if I'm going to buy a shotgun for trap, I look for 30 inch barrels full chokes. That's what I like to shoot. Um, these guys, although they have the adjustable chokes and I could adjust them to full, or I kind of feel like if you really crank those really tight, you're even going like extra full um, because my my choke gauge doesn't even fit in it even to measure it as full. So that's good that I could get a nice tight choke on them um, because they have the shorter barrel, so they might be more spread. So the tighter choke is good, but I just, you know, I would not do well with them just because of their shorter, you know, but... I really do excellent with these. I fell in love with the J.C. Higgins Model 20. I do excellent with it. It's a great shotgun to shoot well with, too, because it's a J.C. Higgins Model 20. It's a pump-action Sears shotgun with no bells and whistles at all. It looks like, you know, compared to, like, these guys showing up with their Perosis and all their... I mean, it's like... I look almost comical. Uh, you know, it's like Elmer Fuddish, you know? <laughs> And I kick ass with this thing, this thing. If I've shot 25s with it, but I'm always in the uh, in the 20s with it. I'm always in the 20s. If I, I'm getting 22s, 23s with this thing on the regular, you know. And then if I got a good game or I really I get lucky and I string together all five stations in one game. You know, I've shot 25 in a row at this thing plenty, but it might be like the last three stations of one game and the first two stations of another game. But whereas both of those games, I might have gotten only a 22 or a 23, but I string together, I could string together five stations with this gun. Um, perfect. Uh, without missing, I just have to get it all in one game, which is, that's the, that's the, the trick now. <laughs> to try to just be consistent enough to get it in one game. Uh, and not just across a series of games somewhere. Um, but the... I, I I really wanted to amend to this. So when I saw this Sears Model 20, I thought about it. I looked at it and I said, yeah, look at how it's like a, a, with a vent rib. And it's like a, just a little bit more of like, let's say, an improved model. It's like I was so in love with the J.C. Higgins, I just had to do it. And I was hoping that it wouldn't ruin the J.C. Higgins for me. I was hoping that they would just be like, like a really good team, you know, to bring to the trap range. And not like it would be, it would mess up uh, my shooting with one 
because I had to get used to the other kind of thing. You know what I mean? And then they were each a little bit different, so I, I would lose consistency. They're both just as consistent. One feels like shooting the other. Um, they have just enough different to have a different... They definitely have a different character to them. They feel a little bit different when they cycle, that kind of thing. When I shoulder them, they feel the same. Um, and when, when I bring them up to my eye, they feel the same. The, sh the shots feel the same. The triggers are both just as crisp. I love these things. Can can I can I uh, honestly tell you? I mean, would you would you believe me if I told you that of all the shotguns I bring up here and I do on this channel that uh, these are one of the one of the best just quality wise the, the way they function and uh, just how it feels to shoulder it, shoot it, consistency of everything, the trigger, the action. Uh, how the sights come to my eye, the sight picture, where, how the bead sits on top of the receiver, where the actual patterning goes, like that it's not covered by the barrel, or, you know, covered. It's like it's just, it's perfect that when I'm right underneath the bird, I have perfect visibility of the bird, and the shot is patterned where it's just right in the perfect spot, and this thing is obliterating. This isn't one of those, I'm not getting chips with this gun, you know what I mean? Like this choke is so, these chokes are tight, and... And these this these things are decimating birds. I'm I am dusting with these, and uh, very impressive. I love them. And uh, what more can I say? That's a great uh, that's a great review right there for a company that's out of business. <laughs> well, Sears, uh, high standard. They're both gone. Sears and high standard both gone. But um, I did just do the uh, video on the high standard pistol. What was that thing again? The, uh, the Supermatic Citation. So if, uh, if you're a high standard fan, uh, go back a couple of videos and check that one out. Um, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to uh, mention that just because uh, there might be some high standard fans drawn into the video just because of the shotgun. Uh, there was definitely a. Uh, Definitely a love affair between Sears and High Standard going on here in the uh, late, the mid 50s into the mid 60s. And I was happy to be on board. And ladies and gentlemen, we're back with the Humiston pair of Model 20s. There's the J.C. Higgins Model 20 um, that we all grew to love so much from our past video. And now we have added into our collection a jewel bolt goddess of a Sears. Sears Model 20. That's right. Sears and Roebuck. Sears, Roebuck, and Company. Sorry. That's what the name of the company is. Sears, Roebuck, and Company. And I am proud to be part of that company, as well as you. You are part of that company. And that's all I got, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you all next time. So, yeah, we moved into a shot. We're done with the 22s for a while, okay? We're back with a shotgun, so the shotgun people are happy. And we did a pistol. Just read. Everybody should be happy. Everybody should be happy with what we're bringing up to the channel. But let me tell you. We got some surprises on the way. Trust me. I got some uh, some stuff. Very, you know how I get intimidated with some of these brands and some of these videos. Like I don't even know if I could do it justice. I've been sitting on another another um, hat trick video for at least two years. But we're going to have to, and I've given you teasers on them too. But we're going to have to get in there. I think I'm going to have to. Get a little bit of vacation time coming up next month. You know what I mean? So I think I'm going to do a little research. I think I'm going to get in there. I'm going to attempt it. I'm going to do my best. So I'm going to be working on that. We still have the Manny Grossman stuff. I'm going to see if I could get in, get on there with, uh, get on Manny's channel there to do a Son of Sam uh, retrospective on the Charter Arms 44, uh, 44 Bulldog, 44 Special Bulldog. I really want to get that done. We're uh, we're talking about a collab, so I'll keep you guys informed. And uh, yeah, we got we got a lot going on. Stay tuned. See you all later. Mm -hmm.